What's up guys, welcome back to r slash RPG Horror Stories. We're about to read people's worst RPG experiences. Without further ado, story one. I said my character was on a period in a campaign and got kicked for it. I am the only female player in a D&D group. My character has been harassed and approached by orcs wanting to have a good time because I'm playing a female elf. Whenever I say something about it, the DM says he's just trying to play a realistic game. It doesn't happen often enough to make me want to leave. We were about to fight a vampire when he said he smelt blood. I joked that it was me he was smelling as I was on my moon cycle after the vampire flirted with me and a DM asked why he would smell me over the others and what a moon cycle was. I looked him straight in the face and said because she's on her period and so she's bleeding. All the other players acted like this was the grossest thing I've ever said even though they have heard me describe disembowelments before. My DM looked at me and said that elves don't get periods. <laughs> what are you talking about, dude? Of course elves get periods. I mean, I assume they go through the similar birth cycle to a human being, despite the ages being much longer. I said that they are humanoids with an ovulation cycle and I was trying to play, quote unquote, realistic. Nice one. The DM asked me to leave. After leaving the Roll20 in Discord server, I looked it up and Ed Greenwood, the creator of the Forgotten Realms, says elves do menstruate. Of course they do. Well, I mean, it's up to interpretation, of course, but since they're humanoids and they live a very similar biological lifestyle to humans, just extended for a long period of time, of course they're going to have periods. And of course these guys are going to have to act so grossed out by a period. A very natural body function. These guys obviously don't deal with women a lot, and the fact that they're grossed out just shows that they're not quite as educated as they could be, which is quite sad, but I think you dodged a bullet with this group. So it's a good job that you left or, well, was kicked. Hopefully you can find a group that takes menstruation a little bit more seriously and just doesn't get grossed out by it. Story two. My mom said I could play with you guys. Bit of an old tale I was reminded of reading another post here. This must have been like four plus years ago. I started a group in a friend's cafe. We would meet every Saturday and play while just hanging out. Usually the owner would join since he was a huge nerd. It wasn't unusual for us to get people coming up and asking what we were doing. Usually kids or young adults asking if they could play, etc. 99% of the time, I would explain that it's unfortunately a full group. Maybe point them in a the direction of an active group like a game store and that was it. We'd have one or two people asking if they could stay and watch and that was usually not an issue. And then there's this guy, really big, he's like six foot two, 300 pounds easily. He is awkwardly hanging out, just watching our table from like 30 feet. Started giving me bad vibes when a woman comes and they walk outside. Less than 10 minutes later, he's back inside and walks up to our table and just stands leering over one of the girls long enough for us to all look up at him and he hits us with this gem. My mom said I could play with you guys. At first, I wasn't sure what to do, but after a moment, I explained that unfortunately, the game was full, but the TCG place down the road has Pathfinder Society and Adventures League type stuff regularly. I want to play with you guys though. My mom said you have to let me play. At this point, I'm starting to put pieces together and I'm assuming he's special needs or on the spectrum or something. So I use my big brother voice and say, Sorry, buddy, we only have so many spots. If you want to hang out with us till your mom comes back, we don't mind, but you're going to have to listen. In my head, that sounded reasonable, but he just got mad and yelled, you have to let me play. My mom said you would. And honestly, we were all kind of flawed. One of the guys jumped in and tried to explain that his mom should have asked first and it's not nice to demand to be part of something. And the guy just yells, stop talking to me like that. Let me play or else. Maybe he's not on the spectrum. Maybe he's just entitled. We'll never know. I suggested we pack it up and continue next week since we'd already been playing for about three hours and none of us wanted to deal with this. Big dude yells that we can't, that we have to let him play or else. And at this point, we're all mostly ignoring him and making plans for the next session. This infuriates Big Man and he grabs the bag of the girl he'd been leering over and just yeets it across the room, shouting that we can't go. We have to let him play. As at this point, the owner comes over and is confused and concerned. I explain the situation and big guy interrupts yelling that we have to let him play because his mum said we had to. Owner apologizes to us and tells big man he's going to have to leave. Cute giant man flailing and throwing a temper tantrum while trying to call his mommy. Everyone was really uncomfortable and that place cleared out quick. Smart. 
Mom shows up in like five minutes and goes right past her blubbering, chuffing, angry son to one of the employees and demands to know what happened. Owner cuts in, explains that her son caused a disturbance and was her menacing slash harassing some customers and then through a temper tantrum, also informed her police had been called. She goes off, my son was just playing a game with his friends. Why are you being mean to my son? Just give him what he wants. Oh, this is a Karen story. This is an RPG horror story, Karen story combined. Pretty much any and every excuse you could think of why a grown man should be allowed to act like a putulent child. I left before the cops showed up, but I heard a bunch of interesting stuff from the owner. Apparently, Big Man wasn't special needs. It was starting to lean that way. Or disabled in any way, officially. He was apparently a normal and functional member of society with no mental health issues. And Mom had previous run-ins with local businesses and police for dumping him in places for extended periods of time and him causing trouble. Yeah, so... It, what I said earlier when I was like, oh, maybe he's not special needs. It definitely seemed like he was just a brat. And Karen Mom here probably gives him everything he wants. So he doesn't know what no means, even from strangers. Neither were arrested, but apparently both were told not to come back on the premises. I remember asking around and finding out the same guy was banned from pretty much every 40k and MTG event in a 30 mile radius because his behavior was well known. Man, that's got to be something, right? Some guy comes to you, you're like, oh no, he's special needs. I'm, I'm going to have to like talk to him in a way that maybe I can help him understand. And he's just like pissed because you're talking to him like a child, but he's acting like a child. Story three, found the group chat about trying to sleep with me. This might be a little long because a few things happened during the campaign. First off, for the longest time, I was the only girl in a party of seven. Although this isn't as dramatic or as awful as other stories, it still makes me angry when I think about it. I won't downplay your experiences. I've not read what's happened, but never downplay your experience. About three years ago, I made a post on Instagram offering to DM 5e for anyone that was interested because my previous party had split up after leaving college. I was quickly approached by an old high school friend, Jack, who said that he had a group gathered. I was welcome to come and meet everyone and decide if we all got on well. Jack was always very sweet in high school, so I agreed and we all met at his flat that weekend to play a few non d, &D related games together and get pizza. This sounds like a really good way to like break the ice of a D&D group. I've never tried this before, but I might try it in the future. After a few hours, we started talking about character ideas, rules, etc. I suggested we talk about our boundaries in game so everyone knew what we were getting into. I'm a relaxed DM. I don't mind if a player decides they want to sleep with a barmaid as long as it doesn't F with the game. The only thing I said I would not do, period, was SA. Everything else is at the discretion of everyone. This is important to know. Fast forward to actually playing. I'm not sure if other people have done this before, but I run the Death House part of Curse of Strahd for about four sessions, till everyone was comfortable playing together. Then homebrewed a campaign from that. Sounds pretty decent, like a like a one shot into a campaign. Four shot, really. The guys were all pretty great up until this point. However, one of them, we'll call him Mike, began to make a few awkward comments to me. Mike decided to play a bard and took my I don't care if you hook up with NPCs very seriously. He tried to frick every single female. It got to the point where I had to speak to him out of game. He got very passive aggressive by telling me I'd already said it was okay. Despite this, he did calm down for a bit and we continued playing. A few sessions later, Mike tries to essay a female orc while she's restrained and unconscious as the party were elsewhere. I'm not even sure of his motives here, but he tried to make his explanations of his actions vague enough that they weren't specifically SA, but obviously were anyway. I stopped the game immediately and told him to quit it. He was out for the rest of the session. He laughed with his buddies and then stopped. Later that night, he sent me a hand-drawn picture of an orc, clearly modelled after myself, with his character grabbing her boobs. I told him that shit was inappropriate and that he wasn't welcome at the next session. The next day, he called me in tears, saying he was really sorry and he had drank way too much the night before. Man, I swear people use drinking as an excuse, but in a lot of cases, dr drinking brings out the real you, so it looks really bad. He also admitted he had a crush on me, but didn't know how to convey that. I politely told him I was flattered, but not interested, and let him back into the party. The rest of the party had been trying to convince me to let him back into the game because he hadn't done that much wrong anyway. Yes, I am an idiot. Apart from that event, I had been having fun with that campaign. Mike is no longer a douchebag at that session. 
He's quiet and one of the guys tells me that I embarrassed him and now he's struggling to connect. Not my problem. Absolutely true. If he, if he embarrassed himself, you didn't embarrass him. Fast forward a few more weeks and things are getting weird again. Two more members of the party have attempted asking me out on dates. I once again politely decline and carry on. The sessions are now a little awkward for me because all the guys are flirting with pretty much every female NPC I place in the game. Slowly but surely, within a week, another guy confesses his love for me. I am no longer enjoying the session, so I plan on finishing up the story branch and then calling it a day with the campaign and leaving. Not even a day later, Jack sends me about 20 screenshots from a private group chat of the boys. They literally had bets on who could sleep with me first. The entire group was discussing ways they could flirt or seduce me. A few screenshots of my own conversations between them, etc. Dude, these guys sound like they never, never grew up. Never grew up. It was so awful to look at because I thought these guys had actually been enjoying my sessions, but I was basically just there as a game myself. Jack told me he was incredibly sorry he hadn't said anything sooner and that he was about to pull out of the campaign because of them. I told the party over Discord that I knew what was going on and that I was disgusted and would not DM for them again. I think I added that none of them was even close to being physically attracted to me and then I left. It has been a while since it's happened, but I still haven't heard from any of these guys again. This is what I said at the start. Don't downplay your experience because this sounds like, it sounds horrific. You wanted to have a really good campaign and you were enjoying it and it seemed like your players were enjoying it. But in the end, they were just being complete douchebags. They were just using you for a game of their own. And it's really disappointing that your old friend Jack, who that you used to get along with quite well, waited so long to tell you. I mean, it's good that he did in the end, but you know, it's too little too late. I hope that you find people that will respect you for who you are and the DM that you are. I'm sure you're a great DM. Story 4. DM tries to gay shame a friend and me, then it gets worse. So a year ago, my friend John, my girlfriend Jane and I started playing in a new group with two friends of ours and Kyle, the GM, a friend of theirs. We agreed on playing a light-hearted game focused on exploration and curiosity. I made a male human fighter of low birth who aimed to become some kind of champion, whilst John played a female album wizard of noble birth who wants to find out who she was outside of her family. Over the first five or so sessions, John and I noticed that we had created the perfect opportunity for a cliche romance, where the lowborn guy wanted to prove himself to the out of reach highborn girl, and she wanted him to acknowledge her for her personality, not her heritage. So we started RPing this romance, exchanging flirty banter, awkward compliments and the like. Nothing sexual or dirty, as no one at our table is into that kind of stuff. We really had fun and the other players liked it too. One of their characters even trying to match make us. But soon, the GM Carl started to try and convince everyone at the table that we were gay, even though we were both straight, for romancing each other. Even though we obviously only did so in character. For a while we were like, okay, whatever, when this came up because we were having fun nonetheless and didn't want to open Pandora's box. But after a while, session 16, 17, I think, our characters actually became a couple, and at that point, Cal really just lost it. First, he tried to punish us in character, even though we didn't get that at the point, and just thought he wanted to challenge us as a group. He then very awkwardly tried to convince my girlfriend that I, being obviously gay, wasn't right for her, and that she should get together with him and his superior straight maleness. Oh no, the alpha male, Ooh. After that very awkward session, we decided we would sleep over it and then discuss it with the group the next day. But when we woke up, he had messaged John and me that he had to kick us from the table because he just couldn't be around gays. Oh my God. And then he blocked us everywhere. He had also messaged my girlfriend inviting her to stay at the table and dump me. At that point, even the two friends of ours who had tried to stay as passive as possible about the conflict decided that they could no longer play with him. We decided to start a new campaign with John as the GM and they've been playing happily ever since. We wrote Kyle a letter, yeah, an actual letter, as he had blocked us everywhere, trying to explain our point of view and the problem with his homophobia, but he unsurprisingly never answered. Guys, you can play two characters of the same sex in, an, in a role-playing game and be the same sex in real life and have a romance with your characters as you're role-playing and still be straight. The same goes for any other sexual orientation and whatever you play for your character. In fact, if you can really nail it, it just means that you're really good at role-playing and very comfortable with who you are as a person and who the character is is playing. If, if the law really makes sense, it's, it's a shame that someone's so obviously homophobic and it sounds like 
it would have been such a perfect campaign for someone to play. It sounds like they really found characters they enjoyed playing. Hopefully they can kind of re-spark that in their new campaign. Maybe they're playing the same characters, maybe not, but I really hope that they have a great time. And obviously they're not gay if they say, hey guys, I'm straight. Anyway guys, that's all for this episode of RPG Horror Stories number two. Um, I'm looking to do some extra Reddit stories in the future, maybe some popular subreddits such as Malicious Compliance. Stick around for that. And obviously, if you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!